Today I want to share with you an Instant Pot Pinto Beans recipe, including the no soaking required method, which can have your pinto beans ready in 30 minutes. But if you soak them overnight, you can have them ready in 15 minutes. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. In a previous video, I shared with you a master recipe for basically how to cook beans. And it was how to cook any type of bean and how to do it in what I call the right way. And the reason that I wanted to share that video was because many of you had told me that you had stocked up on dried beans, but you had never really cooked dried beans before. So I wanted to show you how to cook dried beans, any bean, and make it as though you had just opened a can of beans. And then those cooked beans could be used in any type of recipe. You could cook pinto beans, you could cook black beans, navy beans, chickpeas, whatever the case may be, and then go ahead and proceed with using them in, as I said, any recipe that you wanted. But in that video, as my example, I used pinto beans. And many of you asked me, Mary, can you show us how to make pinto beans in sort of the Tex-Mex style? Actually taking those pinto beans, but making them in a recipe, specifically Tex-Mex pinto beans. So that's what I want to share with you today. Now, I'm going to do them in the Instant Pot. I have an 8-quart Instant Pot here. You can also use your 6-quart Instant Pot if that's what you have. And in the printed recipe, which will be over on my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, I'll also have directions for doing this on the stovetop and in the slow cooker. Now we'll go over the ingredients, but as I said, there will be a printable recipe over on my website, so you don't need to write anything down. Just open the description under this video, look for the word recipe, there'll be a link there, and that'll take you over directly to this recipe. Now when it comes to cooking dried beans in the Instant Pot, you have two options. You can soak your beans overnight, or you can not soak them overnight. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you know that I really like to soak my beans and I like to soak them to the point where they sprout. And the reason that I like to do this is because beans contain different sorts of things known as anti-nutrients that can make beans difficult to digest and can also make it difficult for us to assimilate the nutrients that are in beans. So that's how I like to do things. However, when you cook beans in the Instant Pot, you can cook them quickly as dried beans that have not been soaked. And many of you have told me that when you cook dried beans in the Instant Pot that have not been soaked, you find that they really agree with you. So if you're in a rush and you want to make these pinto beans without soaking them overnight, Give it a try and see how digestible they are for you. It might turn out perfect and be quite a nice time saver. Now, whether you're using soaked beans or unsoaked beans, there's just basically two differences when it comes to cooking them in the Instant Pot. If you've soaked your beans overnight, you're only going to need four cups of water. If you've not soaked your beans overnight, then you're going to need five cups of water. Now we're gonna be cooking our beans on high pressure, whether they've been soaked or not soaked. If they have been soaked overnight, we're gonna cook them on high pressure for 15 minutes. And if they've not been soaked overnight, then we're gonna cook them on high pressure for 30 minutes. Now what I've got here in the liner of my Instant Pot is one pound of dried pinto beans that I've soaked overnight. Now I just used a one pound package of dried pinto beans, but if you buy your pinto beans in bulk, then you're going to need two cups of dried pinto beans. That's equivalent to approximately one pound. Now what we're gonna be adding to our pinto beans is one chopped onion. This was a large onion and I've just got it diced up here. 
and then I've got four cloves of garlic and I've got those minced. You can cut back a little on the garlic if you want, but I find it's really perfect with four cloves of garlic. Then also diced, I've got one jalapeno and I did remove uh, the seeds and the, the uh, membrane inside, uh, so it's not going to be too spicy, but that's really up to you depending on what you want to do. But that's what I find works very well. Next, with the spices, I like to put a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of coriander, and a teaspoon of chili powder. And specifically, I really like ancho chili powder, but you can use any chili powder that you like. And then finally, what I've got is a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And since my beans were soaked overnight, I'm going to need four cups of water. Now, what about the salt? Now, when you go to soak your beans overnight, some cooking instructions will recommend that when you soak them, you can actually brine them. So to your soaking water, you can add salt, as much as like two tablespoons of salt. And then the next day, you can give them a really good rinse before you go ahead and add them into whatever vessel you're going to be cooking them in. And by giving them a good rinse, in essence, you're not necessarily cooking them any longer with salt. And I'll tell you why that's a problem. Because cooking beans with salt can sometimes slow the cooking process or almost prevent the cooking process and have the beans be somewhat tough. But when I soak my beans, I generally just soak them in water because I have soaked them in the past in salted water, but I really haven't noticed a, a significant difference in the final flavor once they're cooked. So what I do is just wait to season them with salt after they're all cooked. So you are going to need some salt. You're going to need about a teaspoon of salt, but we're going to add it once our, be our pinto beans are all cooked. And speaking of salt, if you're interested in learning about the whole gamut of salts that are available today, be sure to click on the video that I'll link to in the iCards, and I'll also put it in the description below, uh, where I talk about the essential salts that you want to be stocking in your prepper pantry. And I also talk about the salts that are low in something called microplastics. And as the name kind of sounds, is something we really want to avoid in our salts. And I go into a lot of detail about all of that in that particular video. Uh, so if you want to know what salt uh, to stock, as well as which ones are going to be the lowest in microplastics, be sure to check out that video. And speaking of the pantry, if you've not had a chance to download my free 36-page pantry list yet, be sure to do that. You can find the link in the description below underneath this video. And if you are new on your journey to creating a traditional foods kitchen where you learn to make things homemade and so on and so forth, I think you'll find that list extremely helpful because it gives you everything that you want to think about buying for your pantry as you move away from processed foods. And then also in that list, I have links to all my videos and printable recipes that show you how to use all those ingredients to make nutritious and delicious meals. So let's go ahead and add in all our ingredients. Once you get all your ingredients in, just go ahead and then pour in your water. So once you've got all of your ingredients in there and you've poured in your water, you just want to give everything a good stir to distribute all of those spices nice and evenly. Now there are a lot of different Instant Pots on the market today. You may have a little older one, you may have a newer one, but the bottom line is that the basic instructions are pretty similar. I believe on the newer models, the venting and sealing knob operates a little differently. But I have a little bit of an older one. Uh, this is a little bit of an older eight quart one, uh, Instant Pot. And my little knob just turns here. There's no big fanfare, no big click or anything like that, uh, which is what I was expecting when I first started using it. But basically, it just has sealing or venting. And you really don't even notice any significant difference in terms of 
moving it one way or the other. But when you use the Instant Pot as a pressure cooker, you need to make sure that with whatever type knob you have, that it's set to sealing. And that's with an S, not the sealing. But the first thing that you want to do is take your lid and simply put it on to your Instant Pot. And when you first put it down, you're going to hear a little song. And then when you turn it to lock it, you're going to hear another song. Now, even though your Instant Pot will be plugged in, when you put the lid on and lock it into place, it's still off. But the next thing that you want to do is make sure that whatever type of vent you have, that it is set to sealing. And you'll notice that if you have one of the red pressure buttons, that the pressure button will be depressed. It will not be, uh, it will not have risen up yet. It'll be depressed and that's exactly what you're looking for. Because as the pressure builds in the Instant Pot, that little red button is gonna start to rise up. And that's how you know that your Instant Pot is under pressure and not to open it. The Instant Pot is only ready to open once you've either manually released the pressure or naturally let it release. And you'll know that the pressure is releasing because that little but red button is gonna go down. Now on your panel, you may have a button that says pressure cook. You may have a button that says manual. You may also have a button that says bean. What I'm gonna do is press my button that says pressure cook. If you have the manual button, you may need to press that instead. Now, since my beans were soaked overnight, I only need to pressure cook these for 15 minutes. If your beans are not soaked overnight, then you're going to want to pressure cook them for 30 minutes. And we're going to pressure cook these beans on high. So I'm going to go ahead and press pressure cook. And then it's already set to 15 minutes. If it wasn't, I would just use the minus sign or the plus sign to adjust and it's already set to high. And if it were set on low, well, there it goes. I would have just adjusted the pressure level. Alrighty, now you need to give it a few minutes, maybe about 10 minutes. It should come up to pressure and then it'll start its countdown for cooking these pinto beans for 15 minutes. Well, the beans cooked for 15 minutes and when it was finished, the Instant Pot beeps. It goes beep, beep, beep to indicate to let me know that they're done. Now, you have some options here. I like to just let my Instant Pot come down from pressure naturally. And there's basically two reasons for this. One is I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> and when you have to uh, manually release the pressure, the steam really comes out very forcefully. But I've become a little braver over time using the Instant Pot, and I, I just use a wooden spoon to protect my hand. But secondly, I do find that if you let the pressure come down naturally, and this is just my personal opinion, you may want to experiment with this, but I think the beans do come a little tastier. Now you'll know when the Instant Pot comes down to pressure naturally because that little red button that I talked about is going to go back down into its little hole. And the other thing that I want to mention is when the cook time is up, whether you're cooking these for 15 minutes or 30 minutes and the Instant Pot beeps, then what happens is on your panel, it starts to do a count up, so to speak, as opposed to a count down as to how long it's been sitting in the Instant Pot. Basically sitting in the Instant Pot since it's been cooked and ready. I often think of it as it's keeping it warm and it's letting you know how long it's been keeping it warm since it was cooked and ready. So I'm going to let this come down to pressure naturally, uh, but if you're in a rush, yes, you can do the manual release. Now, while these are coming down from pressure, I just want to mention a couple of serving options. Now, you can certainly just have some right in a bowl or you can serve it as a side dish, but traditionally two nice ways to serve pinto beans are one, poured over cornbread, or two, wrapped in a corn tortilla. 
And by serving these with cornbread or a corn tortilla, you've now made something that has all the essential amino acids in it. So it's a complete protein meal. So this can be very nice for someone who is a vegetarian. Or even for the rest of us, what we're doing maybe like a meatless Monday or a meatless Friday, or simply just trying to make a meal that's very budget friendly. Now, if you'd like to serve this with a homemade cornbread, I have a great recipe for you, along with a video where I show you how to make it, that I'll be sure to link to in the iCards and in the description below. And it's a very healthy version of cornbread, because not only am I using the cornmeal, I'm also using a whole grain flour, and it's just really tasty. And another thing I want to mention that if you actually want to add something to your pinto beans to boost up the protein, but take it out of the vegetarian arena, you can take a tip from what's done here at a lot of the Texas barbecue places, and that's they'll add in some shredded brisket that's especially delicious. Now, many of you have left me comments saying, gee, Mary, you talk about being in Texas, but you don't sound like a Texan. And you would be right. I am a New Yorker, but I was blessed to marry a Texan. And so now I live here in Texas. And before moving here, I had never had pinto beans. Basically, the beans that I was used to eating were either the ones, as my mother calls them, chichiti beans, which are also known as chickpeas or garbanzo beans, and navy beans, and then maybe baked beans. And this was a real treat for me the very first time that I had pinto beans made in this Tex-Mex fashion. They're very tasty. So if you've never had pinto beans, but you can find them at your grocery store if you live sort of out of the southwest area, definitely give them a try. I think you're going to be very pleased at how tasty they are. Well, the little red button went down, so I know that the Instant Pot came down from pressure, and I just moved the vent from sealing to venting, and I opened my Instant Pot. Well, I, I, in terms of opening it, I turned it to unlock it, I should say. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open it, and I'm gonna open it away from me. And the reason I like to open it away from me is because a lot of steam comes out. Now, I just wanna mention, especially if you're new to working with the Instant Pot, once my Instant Pot came down naturally from pressure, all I did was hit cancel. And on my machine, or on my Instant Pot, uh, that turns it off. Now you can certainly leave the salt out if you're on a salt-restricted diet, but I find that they do taste a little better with salt. And I like to put in a teaspoon of salt, but you can certainly put in less. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that in. And then I'm gonna give these a nice stir they really look wonderful. I'm gonna let all that salt dissolve and then we'll give them a taste and see how they turned out. Well, let's plate up some of these and give this a taste. Oh my goodness, they just look wonderful. How delicious this would be on top of cornbread. Well, these look delicious. Let's give them a try. Mmm. Oh, those are so tasty. And if you've not had ancho chili powder before, I highly recommend that you give it a try. I think you're gonna really enjoy these pinto beans. Now, if you'd like more ideas for budget-friendly pantry meals, as well as how to cook any type of bean the right way, be sure to click on this video over here. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.